spring is here and I thought we would draw some spring flowers. All you need is something to draw on and something to draw with. All right, let's get started. colored pencils but like I said if you would rather draw with something else uh, then go ahead and do that crayons or markers will work great um, so I'm going to show basically two kinds of flowers how to do a daffodil and tulips and any colors will really work so here we go um, I'm going to start with the daffodils so what you need usually daffodils are yellow white or orange and here's how I start I start the daffodils, so choose a place near the top of your paper where you want the daffodil to be. And I start with a curvy, wiggly line that kind of goes almost straight down. And then I turn and I do that same line going up until it meets the other side. So it almost looks like a little wiggly worm here. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to add this little tube that sticks out on the side. Okay, now daffodils have petals that stick out from the side, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, what you want to do is start right here at the back of this little tube, and you go down. Try not to use too straight a lines. Let them curve. Stop, and then make a sharp turn and go right back up to the flower. You're going to have one that does the same kind of thing. They don't have to match perfectly, because this is a flower. Flower petals move, and they're uh, not supposed to be perfect. So it's curve out, and then back to the flower petal. Do it again from the top, down to the flower. Now, usually there's four petals sticking out. This might be in the way a little bit, so I'm just gonna show a little bit hint of that. So, when you get ready to color, um, you could color it in just solid yellow. Sometimes I like to switch colors. Um, and do a different color on the inside. But what you might wanna try if you're using pencils or crayons is starting off with a dark value and then getting lighter. Changing your values, to me it actually saves time because I don't end up always having the color in the whole thing. And if I push everything really dark, sometimes my hands get tired. I think I'm gonna switch over to this orange color I have some daffodils that are kind of orange in the middle part. So I'm gonna do those. And color this part in dark right here, right next to that wiggly line, and then get lighter as I go out. Now, the flower stem will come out from right back here, so it's behind the petals. And I like to give sometimes a little curve. I'm not going all the way down to the bottom of my paper. A lot of organic lines and shapes here because these, all of these things are from nature. Now daffodils have uh, really kind of spiky, almost looks like big like blades. big blades of grass. And they always come from the bottom of the stem. So you need two lines and then you can color it in. All right, let's show you how to make a tulip. If you can draw the letter U, you can draw a tulip. So what you do is you choose, draw a U, okay, near the top of your paper. And what you're gonna do is you're going to go down, kind of diagonal, I leave a little curve. And then I go down, but instead of going all the way down to the U, I stop when I get to that line, almost like the letter Y. And then I add just another little upside down V on top. Now when you color the tulips, I think it's a cool idea sometimes to start off really dark right here and then get lighter. If you're using just a, a pencil, you can do that with a regular pencil too. It will help create some neat looking tulips. So to make the stem, you're going to take it's kind of just like the daffodil, the stem part. Right from the bottom of the flower, make two matching lines, and then color it in. 
This is a very yellow green that I have here for this one. I like to switch colors. It just makes it seem a little more interesting. Now the flower uh, leaves here on a tulip are a bit different than the ones here. These were real kind of thin and spiky. These are a little bit thicker and they have a little bit of curve to them. So I start at the bottom. Don't get too curvy, but I kind of add a little curve and then I stop and then I go back. Now I'm trying to make this a little thicker than I did the other one. All right, I'm going to do the other one on this side. I usually do two leaves per flower. I think I'm going to add a little bit of darker green in here. Maybe I'll add some on the stem as well to make it kind of seem like they belong together. All right, so color those in. Don't forget you can do values on the leaves as well. So switching Maybe I'll do some dark here, but then I'll go back to my lighter green so that it kind of blends in with each other. And you can go back and forth and, and make this look the way you want. Just kind of keep working with it. All right, so that's basically how you do tulips and daffodils. Tulips come just about in every color. The only color I've never seen a tulip is blue. But this is your picture, so if you want to have a blue uh, tulip, go for it. All right, once your tulips and your daffodils, maybe you just want to, maybe you want to have the whole page filled like I did in my last picture. Once you've got that done, I think it's important to add a little bit of ground. Now, the way I do that is I just take a pencil now, if you want it very straight, go ahead and make it straight. Or if you want to kind of have some bumps, that's what I like to do. Looks a little more natural that way. You can do that. So make a line and you can color that in. Now, if you want, maybe this garden is a pristine garden and it doesn't have any weeds at all. If that's the case, you could just be done. Um, if you want to, you can go back and add some grass. Maybe this is just growing in the grass. Um, you could add things in the sky. I'm thinking on this one, I'm going to add a dragonfly. I've seen some kind of blue green ones before. So let's get the thorax. And the abdomen is really long. And then the head is just going to stick right on top. They don't have a very, and their wings are really long and skinny. Now, the neat thing about this, if you add an insect to your picture, you can also give it a little bit of movement. Now, these make, these flower pictures make really good gifts for people. Um, you could put them on a card. You could just leave it just like this, and that's, Perfect. Remember, when you're finished with a piece of artwork, you should probably sign your name. Um, you can also post it to Artsonia if you want to keep it in your digital portfolio. You can That way it's shared with all your families and friends. Um, you can also post it to Seesaw if you are able to. Remember, even if you can't post, uh, you can still do the activity. I hope you have fun drawing today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.